Business Today is brought to you by... More great cities just got closer. The Scotiabank Aero Platinum MasterCard is now even better. Fly to New York, Miami, Orlando, and Fort Lauderdale with just 20,000 Scotia points. With your new Scotiabank Aero Platinum MasterCard, you'll receive a welcome bonus of 10,000 Scotia points so you can enjoy the cities you love most sooner than ever. Apply today. Call 426-7000 or visit your nearest branch. This is Business Today. I'm Marlon Madden. Economist Jeremy Stephen is warning operators in the international business and financial services sector to keep a close eye on the U.S. economy. He says worrying changes could be on the horizon in that jurisdiction that could affect the local sector. While the new U.S. President Donald Trump has not hinted at any changes to tax policies that could impact Barbados, Stephen is predicting that if Washington fails to meet targets, it will not be business as usual. He was speaking as part of a panel during a recent business forum put on by the Barbados International Business Association under the theme, Is the Barbados International Business Sector Under Attack? By at least in the interim, here's what you have to consider with respect to international financial centers such as ours. If you get some leadership of the U.S. economy, say, going into next year, you would expect that Trump would actually push his nationalistic agenda even faster. And that may very well mean trying to clamp down on IFCs, although he hasn't shared that sentiment just yet. He seems to be very easy with respect to tax policy. But if it is that debt spirals out of control and the American economy slows down a little faster than the Federal Reserve is expected, you could expect that he's going to try to get every tax dollar possible falling in line with his jobs policy. Stephen also warned that the economic pie sought after by international financial centers could dwindle as some economies continue to struggle. He advised that it was imperative that Barbados waste no time in looking more to commodity-producing nations, including Africa and Latin America, for investment-driven activities. In addition, Stephen said it was equally important that the national public debt was kept in check if the country is to continue to attract new business. So, going forward, if IFCs are expected then to contribute steadily to economies such as ours, uh, it would be very important, and I see my central bank colleagues in the room, so I'll say this much. It will be very important that public debt has to be managed in a very responsible way so that IFCs will not be, let's say, hindered by domestic public affairs. Also addressing the forum was partner at the Clark Gittins and Farmer Law Firm, Nicola Berry, who said there were several areas that the island should seek to capitalize on as the UK exits the European Union. With the EPA, I would have highlighted earlier that we certainly have to review the opportunities that that provides. Uh, but the UK, we shouldn't have an expectation that the UK will be looking to negotiate a, a, a new kind of trading arrangement with us anytime soon because it certainly will be focusing on its major trading partners um, as soon as uh, it exits the, the EU. Um, IFCs such as Barbados, we have a good record of managing private wealth, um, and so I think that that is an area that we should look at how we can maybe target a particular demographic uh, or, or in, in, in Europe, uh, retired persons, but certainly wealth management is an area that we should be looking to see the opportunities and, and to seize those as well. Insurance giant Sagicor Group registered net income of U.S. $109.3 million for the financial year ending December 31, 2016, compared to U.S. $76.8 million the previous year. In its financial statement for the period under review, the company describes its 2016 performance as little improvement over that of 2015, stating that the company was able to achieve the moderate growth against a background of mixed economic activities in the markets in which it operates. Total revenue increased by 2.7% to reach U.S. $1.134 billion, while expenses closed the year at U.S. $424.2 million, about $3.5 million less than it was in 2015. As at the end of the reporting period, the Sagicor Group had debt totaling U.S. $395.2 million. And in December 2016, S&P Global Ratings reaffirmed the company's credit rating at BB- with stable outlook. 
The answer to the withdrawal of correspondent banking relationships could be in the use of blockchain technology. This suggestion has come from Chief Executive Officer of the Bitcoin and Digital Exchange Company, Bit.com, Gabriel Abed. In addition, Abed says digital currency exchange also has the opportunity to solve a range of challenges including the high costs associated with remittances and cutting down the time it takes to transfer funds. Abed was speaking at the monthly Barbados Chamber of Commerce and Industry luncheon at the Hilton Resort recently. Sending money within the Caribbean to the Caribbean has an average of 8 to 15 percent of the total cost of sending that money. There's no open gateways and open payment standards. Currently, most of the financial businesses within the Caribbean are using closed door networks. They're not inclusive and they're not open for other developers or organizations to participate in. And then the biggest risk that we're facing in the Caribbean, the risk of de-risking, where correspondent banks deem smaller Caribbean banks too high risk and too low reward and pull the plug on their ability to have correspondent linkages. We've seen this in Belize where they lost all ability to have US um, US banking. The answer for magnitude of this problem is blockchain or distributed ledger technology. And it's the only real solution as it suspends the need for complica complicated correspondent linkages and makes all transactions transparent. Now for today's financial tip. When sending money overseas, it is important that the method you use is not only secure but also affordable. Coupled with the cost are exchange rates, which fluctuate and can affect how much you will receive at the other end. That's been Business Today. Join us again on Thursday. Until then, you can get more business and news by logging on to www.barbadostoday.bb, subscribing to our e-paper and liking us on Facebook. I'm Marlon Madden.